All right, guys. So we are going to be get, getting started here into Limitless versus Davenport University. Advanced match game on Ancient. And I'm going to be having the notes afterwards uh, in the description and for you guys after the stream here. So we can have like some good stuff that we're all going to learn from. And let's get to it. So this is how it's going to look. I'll be showing this uh, and having this afterwards. So you guys are all going to be able to have this afterwards. I'm going to be talking about this stuff. So before we get started here, I actually wanted to talk to you guys specifically about a couple different points that I have. And so I felt like there was a couple of things that was going on on this T side. I feel like you guys overall take map control really slowly. They on the other team were giving you map control. So you kind of had to recognize that and start taking it a little bit faster. And then they wouldn't have been able to abuse um, at the end of the round with saving smokes because I felt like they were able to do that. They just didn't do it very well. Um, so they could have definitely screwed you guys over a little bit with that. And I also felt like your defaults are very readable. And I'm going to be uh, showing exactly like how that kind of looks. Uh, I guess a quick note for this round here. It's a small thing with your, uh, with your pistol round. So you're going to be going into this fast mid control here and you're going to have spec just throw like this shit flash kind of off the wall. And, um, you know, corn, he's going to be chilling here, not really doing too much. So you could definitely just like had him flash for you guys do a, a better flash than the shit one off the wall. And that would have been better. Uh, you guys could have easily done, a, you know, if you wanted to do something really fast, then you could have just done like a flash, like just from like a main side. But I would have probably said that you guys probably should have just done like the standard flash like this. And then he could have just went A afterwards okay. since you're going to be going uh, slow. A you're going to be doing like this A split no matter what. So let's get straight back to it. So you're going to see that. Corn's going to be chilling, do nothing. Overall, it's fine. That was just, uh, that was just like a small note that I had. It's fine. And also the, the flash needs a little bit of work here. A little bit of work. It went right into this corner. So you could, you could definitely find something a little bit nicer than that. If you're going to be this close already, you know, you could be doing a, you can even, you could find like a jump throw lineup or yeah, you could probably have found like a jump throw lineup like this. Oh, whoops. Probably could have found something easily like that with refrag. So a cool thing like with refrag actually is you can easily just show and figure out like different types of lineups in here. All right, let's get right back to it. So actually another thing that I felt on your guys' T side is I think that you should definitely have some more set anti-ecos because I felt like you guys are a little bit uncomfortable from watching here. The only thing that I would really say for this round that made you guys feel really awkward is two things. You have your Mac 10 and Kojimo over here. And he's going to end up just holding. He's going to be holding the ramp flank, okay? So while the rest of you guys are taking mid, you know, that's all fine. You guys have Galils and stuff over here. But nobody stayed on this side for you to be able to Molotov onto, onto the right corner. And the only Molotov is on Kojimo. So you guys should have definitely had Kojimo just swap or you just take the risk, you know, what's the chances that they are going to be walking down here? Maybe he does like a little jiggle, make sure that nothing's here. But honestly, you don't really have to. He already did a jiggle earlier, you know, when he did this little jiggle uh, right here. Okay, he did this little jiggle, right? And you guys had to recognize that no one had the Molotov. No one's on this side to be able to do, uh, you know, to be able to Molotov here and clear this out. And it's going to be really tough now. Like you guys are going to are going to get messed up here. And now, now he's dead. You know, you, you could have you could have definitely, you know, swapped that around and made that a little bit cleaner here. So this was all fine, all fine. Good, good utility usage here from Pug. You guys are gonna take this. Or oh, never mind, yeah, you guys got smoked. And then you go into the deep B execute after taking mid. That's this is this is really good pacing here. Good pacing. So you're gonna take Cheetah. Or you're gonna take uh yeah, cave control. You're like, okay, fine, let's take mid. And then you go into this deep B execute. And a little bit of criticism here. So I'm going to let this play out. A little bit of criticism here for this one. Is I think it's the wrong strat in this round for what utility you have available. 
and you guys didn't end up losing this one here but i'm gonna show the entry path thing actually i forget who did it is bebo yeah so let's let's just watch bebo like how many times he could have died here so he's running up here it's cut like says is is not peeking for some reason unless his teammate get killed uh you know you guys should have gotten owned here so you have no molotov here you have too many angles to be worried about so in my opinion right, what you guys should have done instead is you should have done the standard execute on the left and the right and i would have left one player here because they smoked this er earlier correct so they smoked here and you should just leave someone here and you guys are going to smoke left right less angles for you to worry about you'll have a cleaner entry path because there's less angles and then you're also going to be able to uh to crunch cave and you'll have a clean after plant here you won't have as much uh control obviously but it's just it, things could have went really wrong there you could have gotten punished but just just try to recognize like what uh execute you're doing and like what would be the easiest for that round i i think that doing like this deep execute without having the molotov uh to reduce angles um makes it really tough and i kind of was writing down in my notes that i felt like you guys weren't really cognizant of like what the other team is feeling um in terms of like the macro overview you guys are, have, are like winning these rounds at b you know maybe they're going to make an adjustment towards b here so it's just always something to think about. I'm not sure what type of prep that you guys had, but it's it's something to think about for sure. All right, this round, so you guys only have a one one three. That is gonna that will make your life difficult in the future. You're gonna have to have more options than one one three, but it's okay. This team has been saving nades against you guys almost every round, and you're gonna have to figure out like what you're gonna do against teams that are saving nades against you. They could have made this a lot more efficient but uh, they end up not doing that and you know the end of the rounds end up okay because they're not chaining their smokes in, in a good way um so i'll kind of show you how that looks in a sec so it's like the pacing of this round is like kind of fine they could easily have uh done like a like a re-smoke here uh but i think it was a good end end of the round here you guys are able to punish feral and it's a really easy decision for you guys to just split a instead so try to like keep in mind uh the options that you have when teams are saving nades against you and of course you want to be trying to get map control as fast as possible versus teams like this good uh good call for the end of the round though as soon as you punish that push so we're back to the same round as last round all these rounds honestly look pretty similar and what what i would like you guys to understand as well is uh you know pug is here corn is here there's no pressure on these guys at all there's no pressure you know, if you if you watch uh you know pro games, this is always getting like resmoked. This is getting resmoked, resmoked, and the elbow players can't do anything. And usually, you know, you can't do anything if you're the elbow player in that situation because you know you're smoked out. You can't do anything. But you you like you guys can be doing more than what you're doing right now. Instead of just sitting outside elbow, sitting outside a main, Pug could have like smoked probably around here, Molotov, and you're having uh Corn throw like a flash for him. I play as is this elbow guy and if people are giving me this control this whole time i would have just smoked house or it, well for us it would probably already have been smoked house in the beginning of the round but i would have just re-smoked if uh if it was later in the round and i'm waiting for an elbow smoke molotov and then i'd have a uh, corn just throw like a flash for me mid from whichever spot that you want to do it at and or like you know there's so many different options for for flashes really you can just throw the flash however and he would be able to clear mid for you guys already so you guys have mid control at one one ten but you could have had it probably about 20 seconds ago so don't be afraid to to take that and actually i thought that this was a perfect change of pace call i i like this call especially for them and their adjustment they did a, a lobby smoke and you guys are going to be doing uh you guys are going to be doing like this b pop eventually you know it's showing like a different pace like they smoked cheetah because they're like okay these guys are just waiting we're going to smoke out cheetah they're going to take mid and then we're going to save our smokes and we're going to smoke out the uh the entrances here and that would make it really tough for you so going to that change of pace after that smoke is there and just popping up is a really good call all right this round this round this is a full p250 round and i do have a little bit of something about this round 
So you guys start off this round really nicely. 5v3, like right off the bat. And it's going to go wrong from here a little bit. You're going to have to think on these rounds that you have such an advantage with your your guns, your utility, your everything. And it's kind of hard for you guys to want to scout with someone this round because you don't have like any Mac 10s. Um, it might be a little bit risky. You don't want to give them an AK. I get it. I get it. So you're going to go all together A main. This is perfect. This is fine, honestly. Like, you guys have AKs against their horrible pistols. And on these types of rounds, you need to be comfortable taking your time. You, that you guys have the advantage here. What I would have liked to see is you guys smoke out Donut, smoke out Temple, or, or smoke CT, smoke Donut. Probably, yeah, smoke Donut, smoke CT. And take your time. You guys don't need to go before the smokes pop. You guys are just rushing out here. You guys are rushing out here. You're not even being covered. This donut smoke's not even up. Donut smoke's not even up. CT smoke's not even existing, even though you guys have three more smokes. You know, just take your time. You're trying to rush out before the smokes. You don't know where they are. You're getting timings here and there. And chaos is happening. You want to limit chaos as much as possible during these rounds where you have such an advantage. So again, we're going to go into another 113. And... We're going to have the same pacing again. So I was kind of just reiterating in my notes that you guys are not taking map control where it's given to you. The pacing is exactly the same on all of these rounds. You don't have any lurk plays or any like team walkout plays to make them scared of different types of timings that are, are, are available. So off of that, we're going to go back into, well, you know, the same round. We've watched the same round, 10 rounds in a row from both sides. Both sides are not fighting for anything. <laughs> They're just taking a long time to take map control. If I was a CT in this game, I would literally just, you know, be drinking my coffee for like a minute straight. And then I'd just throw my smokes at the top of the ramp or in cave. And then you guys would be screwed. And I would be chilling. I, I, this would be like the like less stressful, least stressful game ever. 1-1-3, one, one, same round. Or, oh no, 2-3. Finally. Oh, never mind. 1-1-3. One, one, at least you guys are showing a little bit of pressure on this round with the with the Molotov A main. You guys are showing a little bit of something. Faster map control. Definitely a lot better. Or it, well, it it would be good if it wasn't the same pacing that you've shown most of these rounds. It was it was only about like 10 or 20 seconds uh faster. But you know, this is this is definitely fine. It's like good trades. You guys had good trades here. You know, it was a good round. And I'm actually just going to go to the next side because I think I've uh, made my points on here. But so I'm just going to go over like the general notes that I had from this with you guys here. So T side general, let's, let's just go through the TLDR of, of uh, what was happening here. So recognize the map control you're being granted and take it faster, especially versus teams that are saving nades. Because if a team is saving nades and they were actually trying to, you know, stuff you at the correct timings, it would have been very difficult. So try to put in what they're seeing in your minds as well, how they're losing rounds and how they might adjust. So these rounds, uh, yeah, don't, wor don't worry about like if the camp's covering or not, I'm gonna have it afterwards. But whenever you're, you're playing a game, you're always gonna be trying to think, oh, they're doing this, so we're gonna do that to counter them. So, you know, most people or most teams, they're probably gonna try to adjust for that right afterwards. But, you know, try to stay one step ahead and try to like, make a story of uh, how they're playing and how they're going to adjust and what you're going to do to counter that adjustment. More mobility, trying to keep the CT guessing, exactly. So swapping it up with different defaults, doing one two twos, uh, three one one starts, one one threes, doing some more walk plays so you're not showing uh, you know, where you are every single time that you throw utility. It'll look a lot better. Maybe get some anti-ecos. So that was one of my... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll move my notes because we're talking about Seaside anyway right now. So maybe get some set anti-ecos. That was a note that I had for you guys. I felt like you guys were a little bit uncomfortable in, in the 2-0 round. Just try to get a little bit more set where everyone knows exactly what they're going to be doing. On the USP type rounds where you guys have a lot more... Uh, you guys have way better weapons than them. Take your time. Don't be doing flying smokes. You don't need to run with the smokes against USPs. Take aim duels. And just, just relax on those rounds. There's no need to rush. You can, you can do scouts as well. On that round, uh, it wasn't really showing that. Like, it wasn't really possible. 
Um, but, you know, if you have a mech 10, uh, you guys can definitely utilize someone scouting so you can figure out where the stack is when you're up in those 5e3s. Scouts are very readable. We've, we've talked about this a little bit more. And then on the topic of defaults being readable, adding in different types of defaults. So not only should you have a 113, you should have a 122, you should have 311s, 113s, and that goes for more than just ancient as well. This, this should be pretty much the standard for you on CT and T side. All right, let's get to the CT side. Are you using this over Evernote? Yeah, I am now actually. I feel like it's a lot nicer. All right, so I had some recurring themes that you guys had from CT side. So you guys had no map control for a lot of this half and you gave the T's everything that they wanted. I felt like a lot of the rounds you kind of just were praying instead of uh, having initiative and, and putting things into your own hands. And if you're going to be playing a passive style on the CT side, kind of like how the other team was playing, how Limitless was playing on their CT side, then you have to know how to be playing uh, to chain smokes and knowing at what point in the default they're at so it can be effective. My last point here is you guys need to have a discussion about how you want to play 4.4k type of rounds. And we're going to get to that. And when you have low utility on gun rounds, you cannot play those rounds the same as you can on uh, complete full buys. So we're going to skip pistol round. I actually didn't have a note for this round. So let's see what happens. You guys are going to start into a 221. And you guys are playing for Cheetah in this round. Unfortunately, you get spammed at the exact moment that Austin spams. Kind of sucks. So 4v5. 4v5 here. There should definitely be some type of uh, adjustment. Some type of play that you guys are all going to do together. So we're in a 4v5, okay? So let's see exactly when this happens. So 125. 125. Spec dies. And we're not seeing any movement here. What's going to happen, guys? The smoke is going to go away, Cheetah. Corn and Pug are just chilling. And this is going to be a reoccurring theme during this game where you guys are just going to pray. And I, I hate the pray method of rounds. I hate, I hate uh, you know, how those rounds feel in the moment as well. It feels completely out of your control. And nothing is strong in this round. You guys don't know where they're going exactly. And it's tough. Uh, you need to have some type of different rotation. Kojimo thankfully uh, equals it up with uh, Mr. Atomic going for a solo peek. You're not always blessed with these. You're not always blessed with these. You don't get those types of kills. So if Hug and Corn, you guys are having some initiative here, pushing a main. That's, that's definitely good. It's a little bit late. And Bebo is going for a solo play completely. You guys are completely all playing all by yourself. You have no idea what they're doing, where they're going, and you were blessed by the lords this, this round, but it doesn't always get that easy. So let's go into game and let's show like what different things that you guys could have done. So when you guys are in a 4v5, nice. A guys took info together though. They did after like 40 seconds while the B guys were pushing B main. It's, uh, it's not, it, wasn't a, it wasn't very good. So 4v5s, you have to make some certain side of the map stronger. You cannot just sit in two blank two, okay? So 125, I would have loved to see you guys group up as three in one position, clear some part of the map out while playing retake. So, you know, one of the things you guys could have done is you could have, uh, you could have had the rifler come back. He could have came back and played long. He could have smoked out, uh, he could have smoked out the top of the ramp or something. Uh, in like 10 seconds, as uh, Kojimo came back to do, uh, came back to house, and you guys could have recleared mid. You you could have recleared mid. You guys are so close. You guys are so close to being able to do something all together here. And you have to make these decisions uh, a lot faster. So at 125, he died, and instead of doing anything together, you guys all sat here, two blank two. I would have put Kojimo to come back. Uh, and just be the support this round or like be holding an angle as Pug and Corn are just going to walk out. So I would have liked to see Kojima come back to house. These two guys are already in position to clear out mid. Have these guys start walking out here. Take these duels. Figure out where they are. You probably, for most teams, you're going to 
have some type of engagement. And if you don't, you know, just, just flank. Just flank. You guys are already playing retake on A. Just give up A. You cannot play for everything in these rounds, okay? And that goes for every map, not just Ancient. You cannot play for everything. Take, take some risk. Do something together as a team. Play retake. All right, this is going to look like a very similar round here. Pug is going to be picking up mid. But the problem with this angle, Pug, also is you guys have no idea if they're in-house. And no one is picking that up on your guys' B side as well. Uh, you guys have a lot of gaps in your defense right now. And you're also doing the prey strategy. See, this round, you guys are just waiting to be executed on. You're behind smokes. And, you know, things go wrong here. You were never in control of this round from start to finish. So try to find some, uh, some different plays that you guys can do and when you should be doing them. Yeah, so Kojima, you're going to have to go a lot slower here. If your team is... Uh, you guys are clearing out mid. Okay, whatever. That's fine. But you would have had to go a lot slower here. And you guys should probably talk about how you want to do your retakes. This took a little bit too much time. If you guys... like. Okay, also, if, you're gonna, if you guys are going to be clearing mid here, your Dona players are behind a smoke. You might as well be helping, right, guys? You, you might as well come over here and help. Um, and then you can go into it, but you, you can't have both of your B players coming to house uh, you know, when the bomb has been down for like 5-10 seconds already. You need to start already getting into position here. Let the Dona players... You can have one guy come over and just like clear mid real quick. Um, but yeah, just, you, you guys have to be quicker. And this round is a way better round. This is a way better round. So this round, you guys all know what you're doing. So this, this is beautiful. You guys are playing retake on A. You're doing a 3-2. And you're fighting for mid with 2. This is very nice. This is very nice. And I would have changed up the little micro details here. But I like that everyone knows what they're doing. You know, Kojimo is going to be holding the ramp. He's, he's going to get a... He's going to punish Barrel for peeking up here. Pug is going to die due to like a little micro mistake. You know, uh... I think that the setup could have been adjusted a little bit. I would have said if you guys want to have like that play where you're going to be doing like the flash over, then I probably would have had like maybe three mid and you just have like two over here because you don't want to be playing for too much. Usually what you'll see with teams is if, if they're going to try to shut down lane and mid, they're going to have a really aggressive cheetah player. And they're going to have another guy at B and he's going to be trying to shut down any early ramps. And he's going to, um, you know, just be there to try to stuff, you know, kill anyone if they're running up the ramp. Um, and then these other three mid guys, they're all playing with each other. So as soon as you guys double mollied here, you took this, you smoked it, then you can have another person actually be holding your smoke. Uh, sorry. Well, actually, your smoke missed as well. But if your smoke is here, there's always a chance they boost. So you can have, like, the other guy spamming as you're walking up here. And then you'll have the other player, the flash. So... You know, this is a little micro detail round and there were mistakes. You guys can adjust the setup. But I liked this round so much more than the last rounds. Everyone knows what they're doing this round, what they're playing for. So good job on this one. All right. So this round, we're going to go back to another praying round. Everyone's going to go into their spots and they're just going to sit tight. You guys start into a 3-1-1, into a three, one, one, 3 towards B, 1 mid, 1 A. You're going to be playing it from Donut, and everyone's going to stay in their spots for the rest of this round, pretty much. You guys have, you guys are not going to know where they're going, how their movement is. You're going to hear them taking this control. But, you know, I, I feel like this round is completely out of your hands. You're going to sit in this setup, and now you're, it. now you're done. Like, I feel like this is probably the last call of the round. Sit, sit in this corner over here. Uh, sit in this corner, Spec. I'm going to hold... And, Bebo, and Bebo is, is jiggling top of the ramp. And now we're done. We're done talking for the rest of the round, pretty much. And I really dislike this type of round. Yeah, I mean, just in general, the, the theme of the CT side is uh, not a lot of initiative. Just being a little bit more active is going to do a lot of wonders for you guys. This is not a bad round at all. Not a bad round. You know, I like that you guys are playing for mid here. Kojimo is actually going to be having some impact this round. And, you know, there's little micro things that are happening here and there. And I want to show how it breaks down from this 5v4, actually. Okay, so from this 5v4, 
I was talking a bit before about how, you know, just creeping with, you know, two or three guys can be really strong when the op isn't there to punish you, right? And now I'm going to show you these two kills that happen here. So Atomic, he recognizes that Kojimo, okay, well, I, th I think he was already going for this anyway, actually, because he was boosted and he saw nothing, right? So Atomic saw nothing and now he's able to keep walking up and he gets confirmation as soon as Kojimo gets the kill at mid that the op isn't B, okay? Op is not B. So that gives him room to work up here. Trev, thank you for the sub. And I would have liked Limitless uh, when you guys watch this after. You know, you guys should have regrouped with Atomic here. He has a lot of space. You know that the op isn't there. Start walking up with him. It's just, it's so hard for Davenport to actually punish any of this. Like, look look at how much space he has. You know, imagine that these two guys are together with you. And they're, they're able to, you know, just take the site. It's, it's free. It's free, honestly. Atomic is going to be able to, to punish anyone. Mainly... You guys need to be more on the same page of what you guys are doing, what you guys are fighting for, and how to make everyone more comfortable. Because you guys are definitely not comfortable in this round. You're not comfortable. Like, no one... A comfortable player is not going to go into short right here and jiggle ramp with a FAMAS. Okay? And if you guys had more initiative and in knowing more on the same page of what you're fighting for, then you guys are going to be... Uh, like not having these types of rounds where it looks kind of looks kind of wonky and coming into the last round here i like the a main push i like the a main push i don't really feel like you guys needed to uh smoke this out actually you guys are mauling this and then you're smoking it but you don't have to show all that extra stuff in my opinion because you can molly and just have the have the pressure and just you know just keep it like, if Korn is going to play here anyway, then, like, they don't know that for sure until you smoke it. Like, if you guys were going to molly and smoke it and then, like, play heavier from mid, maybe you molly it, you smoke it, and they go into game. So if you guys were going to molly, smoke it, and then just, like, leave and these two guys go to Donut and you guys refight mid because they just took it or something, then that would feel a little bit better in my opinion. Or what I think that you guys should be working on on your CT side is I think that you guys should be figuring out different types of starts, put Kojimo in different spots where he's going to have more impact with the Zop. Most of the time you're going to be getting, uh, you're going to get smoked off here. Be more on the same page of what you're fighting for every round as well. Be more on the same page. That round where you guys had 44 and Kojimo and Pug are playing in house and the smoke was here. You guys are just, you know, shooting around here. You, you're not able to fight mid. You have no info of mid. And you should know that you can't really fight for it if they did put any pressure. So the comms should pretty much be... Okay, so this round we're going to just start mid. And if we have it, we're going to keep it. If not, we're just going to go back to... We're going to go back and we're going to push B mid round, okay? And you're going to have a rotation where um, Korn just plays Donut. He picks up the house cross. And then Kojimo, you can just be opping A. And you're going you're gonna to actually find picks playing A with your op rather than sitting behind a house smoke. Okay, so try to have more plans for the beginning of the round. Know what you're fighting for, and it's going to feel more comfortable. And then if you are going to be playing like these late rounds, maybe you've identified that they're a team that goes really slow, and they telegraph all of like their different, uh, like their different endings and how they're going. They molly cheetah, they smoke, whatever. It's 1 o'clock, 50 seconds, and you guys are saving all your nades because you know, you know that's how the game's been going. That's time for you to just start... You know, chaining smoke somewhere. Chain smoke's at the top of the ramp, and you're going to be, like, playing heavy here. Like, whatever it is. Uh, you know, find those timings. Identify how long it's taking for them to default, and, you know, use your smokes accordingly. And yeah, just be more active. Take more initiative overall. Like, trying to, try to, like, see at what point they are in their defaults, and trying to catch them in between, like, the timings. And you're going to feel more in control of the game when you're going to have more initiative, going for different plays as a team. And overall, it's going to be a lot better for you guys. I feel like maybe understanding why you fight for and having conversations about that is going to make taking space and initiative more natural. Exactly. That's more about getting on the same page as a team, knowing what you guys are playing for, why you're playing for it, uh, and when you should go for it. It's going to make everyone more comfortable saying these calls instead of it just being on one person. And don't be afraid. Like, guys, if, if you see and you recognize what they're doing 
at the end of that round, don't be afraid to change up the spot. Like, uh, you know, if, if you're going to sit here and you were guessing that they were going to like take cave kind of early and they're not like if you if you like decided to do this setup at 120 or what 110 and 30 seconds have passed, please do something different. Please take some initiative, go somewhere else, refight. Maybe you, you guys are two rifles here and you throw like this shit flash in the corner and you just you just fucking fight it. Just try to kill these guys. You know, you're going to see like top tier teams do these types of plays. If uh, if you're not that creative, you can look at these different options that top tier teams are doing. Um, they're definitely there. They exist. But just feel comfortable about why you're doing it and when. Good review. Good review.